Hey there, it's Carrie at Studio R12 Stencils. Today we're talking all about stack signs for the holidays. These are quick and easy projects, and we're gonna tell you the tools you need to make a masterpiece. Let's go ahead and dive right in. We went ahead and base coated our surface. If you want to see some tips on how to base coat a round surface, be sure to check out our round door hanger playlist. These are so popular right now to hang on your door just to have a different shape for decor. We will link that above. Now, one thing we did was we decided to make this a two-sided project. So we use paint color number 22 for this base coat and paint color number 72 for the blue base coat. We will link our paint color chart below so that you can grab it and use the same paint colors that we're using. So the cool thing about our stack signs is they come in several different options. We have them for different holidays, different seasons. We have them that are um, personalized that you can put on your front door. And you'll wanna check the listings because they all are a little different. Some just come with the embellishments like the ones that we've showed off over here. We also have some that come with stencils and that's why we wanted to paint this one for you in our tutorial. This one not only comes with a stencil, it also comes with the 3D pieces. And today we're gonna to show you how to mix and match so that you can make not one, but two projects out of this. So we have our base coat ready. And for our first side, we are sticking with Christmas colors, but we're going to do more of a rustic Christmas. So we have 22 for our base coat. Our green is going to be a number 42. And then our red is 18. So if you are looking for the best holiday red, just pretty much everything on the wall behind me is painted in our holiday red. That is number 18. It is our favorite color for the holiday season. So the cool thing about this one, since it comes with a stencil, is that you can use it kind of as a placement guide. So when we were first making these, we did a poll and some people in the office said that they would like to know where to place the embellishments. And some people said that they would like to go rogue or off-road and just kind of put it wherever they want. So we know that there are people who like both. So we try to give some different options for that. So with this, with the stencil, what we're going to do is we have the Mary, we have the Christmas, and we have the greenery. However, on this side, we are just going to use the Christmas as our embellishment and we're going to use the stencil to paint the rest. Let's talk about some quick tips on stenciling for beginners. Always shake your paint before you use it. We use an acrylic paint. <clears throat> we use a palette that is a piece of scrap mylar. So we used to use palette paper and then supply chain issues happened. We couldn't get it anymore. So now we use a piece of scrap mylar. It's amazing because it is washable. It's reusable, just like your stencils. And then you can use it over and over and over again. We also sell that on studior12.com. You can buy them in singles or you can buy them in packs. When people tell us that they bleed under with their stencils, the first thing we ask is what type of brush are you using? A lot of stencilers use a flat brush. However, we recommend using a dome shaped brush. This has helped reduce the bleeding under for ourselves and several of our stencil fans who watch our videos. The shape of the brush being a dome means that when you are painting on your project, less of the brush actually touches your project because of how the brush is cut. So because of this, it helps reduce the amount of bleeding under because the very edges of the brush, which might be close to the edge of your stencil, aren't going and digging underneath your stencil. So dome brush is the first tip in your stencil basics. We're going to come to the paint. We do not add water to the paint and you always want to have a dry brush. Grab some paint, come over to a paper towel, and we will swirl off 10 to 15 times, depending on how much paint you get on your brush. You can come to your hand to see, do a little bit of a test to see if you have enough paint or too much paint. You want it to be very light and dusty. If it's dusty, you're good to go. If it's wet and goopy, come back to your paper towel. Now we're going to come to our project, and we are going to swirl 
on very lightly. So stenciling is a layers game. We want it to be very light and dusty and then it will build on top of each other. If you see swirl marks on your project, you have too much paint on your brush. You want to go swirl off a little bit more on your paper towel and then <clears throat> come back to it. So I'm just going to do a really light swirl on this C. Since we are going to use the Christmas 3D embellishment, this light swirl just right here will help me know exactly where to place that. So this is going to be a placemat for our project. Since we lightly dusted our Mary, it is ready to go back to the beginning. We don't have any drying time because it's not wet. We'll get some more paint, come back over here, swirl, wipe off, and then come back to our project. So you do have a couple of ways that you can paint on your project. You can swirl or you can stipple, which is a tapping motion. We really like the swirling because it uses less paint and it decreases your bleeding under. However, it does take a longer time to cover. So depending on what you want your project to look like, if you are going for a rustic, country, weathered look, then you may only want to add one or two layers of paint. However, if you're going for something bold and bright, you're going to have to add more layers. I like to do the first couple of layers with a swirl and then if I'm looking for something bold, I'll go into a stippling. Now, one thing you want to keep your mind um, on your mind when you're stippling is you are applying more pressure. So there is an increased chance of bleeding under on your project when you are stippling because you are being more forceful. And then also more paint gets pushed up into the brush, which means you have more paint that can go under. stipple since you are using more paint you will probably have to blow dry between layers depending on how big of a surface you are painting on there are a couple of ways to tell if your paint is dry most times you can look at it and see if it looks wet you can also touch it and it should not come off on your hand and it should also not be cool to the touch and that's really how we test the backgrounds to see if they are dry is to check and see if they are wet or cool to the touch. Another difference between the stippling and swirling is that you do have to apply paint a lot more often when you are stippling because you are using more paint on your project with that stipple motion. So with the swirl, I was able to get an entire layer on my Mary. And now with the stipple, I'm only able to get about a letter and a half before I have to apply more paint. Okay, let's take a look and see how our red is looking here. All right, it's pretty bold, it's pretty even. You will want to keep an eye on your reds. So reds don't have a lot of pigment in the paint. So with the red, you are probably going to have to do more layers. So we did two layers of swirling and two layers of stippling. It is pretty good, so I think we could be okay with this. If you would want an extra layer of coverage, just maybe to make it a little more bold, you might do one or two extra layers of stippling. And then once we get our Christmas paint in, once we put it beside it, we might decide to add a little extra just in case to make it match a little better. Now I am going to leave my stencil on here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop my red into the water. If you don't have many brushes and you might decide to go back to your Mary, you'll want to put this in a plastic baggie and wrap it up and leave it to the side. If you have plenty of brushes and you can continue to go through them, you can pop it in the water and leave it there for to be cleaned later. So now we're going to go into our green to paint our leaves and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to swirl on a couple layers and then stipple and we'll be back when it's done. So we have done one swirl and two stipple layers on our greenery. I was a little impatient 
and then didn't hit the blow dryer before I came back to start my third layer of stippling. If your, dry, if your paint is not dry and you start to stipple or swirl, you will notice white spots begin to form on your project. So then it starts to push the paint away from where you are hitting. You always want to make sure that your paint is dry before going to your next layer so that it builds rather than tears apart. Okay, we have our greenery done. I pulled back my stencil to take a little peek because my paint is still a little wet. We recommend peeking when you are painting. It took me a really long time to be okay with peeking because I was afraid if I pulled my stencil up, I might not get it back to where it needed to be. However, one of the only ways that you can fix your projects if you make a mistake is to do it quickly before the paint has the time to set and cure. So that means you have probably less than five minutes max before your paint really dries that you can fix your mistakes. So I have one tiny area here that the green goes outside of the white. Since we are using rustic colors on this, if I was painting the project for myself, I would let it dry and then I would hit this with the sand, sanding block. I still may do that because I think it might look really cool to have the background a little bit rustic and then the Christmas really bright and bold, but I do want to show you how you can fix this. We have a click eraser on our website, studior12.com. It is a PVC eraser. If you take it to your project just plain and start erasing, nothing is going to happen. However, if you add water to it, you can add a little bit of water, come to your paper towel so it's not dripping wet, and then come right into the area that you have bleeding and it erases that paint. And it's incredible. It's one of our favorite tools that we have. You can also use a paper towel and water. If you have a really tight area and you feel that the eraser is too big, you could use a paper towel, get it wet, and put it over top of your fingernail and just kind of scrape right where it is. But this tool is amazing and it is the reason why we recommend peaking. And also when I did this, you might notice my stencil is curled here. I wasn't ready to take my stencil off completely in case I needed to use it again. So I just bent my stencil back and grabbed an extra piece of tape and then just taped it over the edge. So then it's folded, it's not bending anywhere, but it also doesn't take it off completely. So let's take this stencil completely off so you can see what we have here. So we have our Mary, we have our greenery, and we have our outline for where Christmas is going to go. Now since I decided that I wanted to do a little sanding, we have a couple different sanding blocks. These are off Amazon and we'll put a link for them below. We use a really low grit of sandpaper, which makes it really rough, and then a higher grit of sandpaper, which is a little bit more smooth. The smooth sandpaper is one that we'll use on almost every project just to get it nice and smooth so you don't feel the ridges from your paint. The really low grit, the one that's really rough, is what we use to make our projects look more rustic and country. A lot of times people are nervous to hit that sandpaper because you spent so much time working on your project that you hate to mess it up. Now, however, you also want to keep in mind, depending on what your project looks like, since we have a white background with red, if your project is not completely dry, you might smear some of that red. So I'm just going to go straight across and then wipe off the dust because the dust is what is going to make it smear. We always like to sand in the same direction. So if I'm sanding this way, I want to do all my sands in one direction. We don't want to do a couple this way and a couple this way. And you can always turn your board to match how you want your sanding grain to look. So 
So if you would want, you can kind of dig it into the edge a little bit to get the edges a little more rustic. And you're just gonna kind of turn it on the toe to do that. You can also pull it through a little bit more. Just to kind of take it back a little bit. And now you can see it just dulls it a little bit, which would have helped in that one little area where we had the boo-boo. We could have focused our sanding paper on that spot. So now we have our Merry Christmas. It's looking nice and rustic. I'm excited about this. I didn't plan on doing this and I love this, how those happy accidents come together. So now we know where we want our Christmas to be because we use that stencil as a guideline. Let me show you how we paint our 3D embellishments. These are two tools that you will want to have in your arsenal if you are painting cutouts and embellishments. These are so popular right now. This is our ink sweeper. This is my favorite for painting these. We also have our jumbo dauber. It's my second favorite, but I like to use the ink sweeper. So we are going to go back to our red paint because we want our Christmas to be the same color as our Mary. These are very dense foam applicators. They have a little spots for you to put your fingers. We get a little bit of paint here on our ink sweeper. We are still going to come over to our paper towel and offload it a little bit. If you have too much paint on your ink sweeper, you will get a mess on the edge of your project. Let me find one. I know that we have one. So you can kind of see here, it's not drastic, but on the S and on the O of this project, there's a little bit of a bleed over on the edges. And that is because there was too much paint, so it spilled over, which is another reason that we like to use the ink sweeper rather than the jumbo dauber because the jumbo dauber is so big that the edges of the foam will go over the edges of your cutout. We also like to recommend keeping your cutout on a flat surface and not trying to hold it up in the air when you are trying to apply your paint. This is a long word and if you're holding it, it's not going to be stable and there is a chance that you could bend it and cause it to break if it's not down on a flat surface. So we're just being very careful here, going around letter by letter, using our, jump, or our ink sweeper. You can see I only have paint on one side. I'm just using the edge and tip of this ink sweeper so that I don't have too much sponge on my project. Okay, so we have one layer of paint on Christmas. And I think that since we are going to go with more of a rustic theme for this, I think I'm just going to leave it here. If I add another layer of paint, it is going to make it pop, which could be a cool look because then you have your rustic and then your big and bold but I think I really like how it looks with just one layer. So that was quick and easy. That's one side. Let's see what happens on the next side. Before we get to the back side of this project, let's talk about the literal endless options that you have. So you can choose your colors. We did a traditional Christmas. We did one that's more snowy. And then this one we did with our baby, it's cold outside. We added snow to the trees we added glitter, you can use foil. You can see that we did our snowflakes in different placement for each of them. So you can really design this to your heart's content. Now on to side two, first things first, make sure you know where the top of your project is here because you'll want to put it down so that if you do decide to do a two-sided project, you'll probably drill a hole in it, hang it from a rope, so you'll want to make sure that your project is facing the same way, that your design is in the same spot so that when it hangs, it looks good on both sides. You may have noticed that I put down a towel as I flipped my project over. So when I flipped it over to get to the blue side, I have some junk on the back of my project 
that came from our painting table. We sand a lot here. There's a bunch of excess paint and some debris. So what I'll do is to protect the white side, we just put down a dish towel that we got from the Dollar Tree. And then I'll go to the back side of this and just give it a slight sand, focusing on the areas where there may have been a little bit of debris and buildup that came off of our table. And we'll sand that right off. Maybe grabbing some areas a couple of times that need some extra attention. So now when you do this, you might notice that your edges get a little rustic if you tend to put the back of your block down or push it forward. So if you're not happy with that, if you want it to be more bold, you could always go back over the base coat and do another coat just to liven it up and cover some of that spot. So let's talk about colors. So for our base coat, we're using a number 72. We're also going to be using a number 43 a 49 and a 59. So we kind of went off kilter a little bit with our Christmas colors and decided to do something that's not necessarily traditional Christmas, but it might go with some of your decor. The beautiful thing about stencils is that they are reusable. You could go ahead and wash this before you used it again. If you are using red on your stencil and then going to use a lighter color over top of it, you might want to wash it between each use. Same with glitter, or same if you are going to use a, an adhesive on your project, you might want to wash between each use. However, we don't necessarily need this Mary because we have our cutout, so we're okay with not washing it here. So for this one, we're going to do the opposite of what we did on the front. We are going to paint the word Christmas, and then we are going to use Mary and our leaf embellishment. And then this one also has some berries, so we'll be able to attach those. So I'm going to go ahead and get some painting, but I do have some tips along the way. Okay, so I originally said we were going to use number 59 to paint our Mary. However, the more I look at it, I'm a little concerned that it's not going to pop enough off of the dark background. So I pulled out some similar colors. We have 38, which kind of goes in the middle of this color scheme, and then 70, which is really light. So I think I'm going to go with the middle number, 38, and that's what I'm going to use to paint my Mary. So we talked about earlier two products that we love to paint on our embellishments and cutouts, and that's the Ink Sweeper and the Jumbo Dauber. Two of the products that I did not mention on purpose is the Polyfoam Brush and the dome brush. We talk about painting with these all the time, but on these projects, we don't recommend them. However, if it's all you have, if you don't have any of the sponges, you can do it. You just have to be extra careful due to the size of these products. I will say that most of the cutouts that you get from us are going to come with black around the edges. If you do not like that and you want it to be the color of your words, the poly foam brush is really good for getting the edges here because you can just put paint on the tip and come around here on the edge. However, it is really hard to get in between the letters like the two R's. But the poly foam brush can also be really helpful if you make mistakes and I'll show you how we do that. We did two layers of the number 38 on the Mary and the Berries. Let's talk about fixing mistakes. So there's a little bit of paint that went over the edge of this M here. Most places I'm okay with it having just a smidge of overlay, but this is a little bit excessive and a little bit messy. So that can happen for a couple of reasons. Maybe you didn't offload it enough from your paint to your paper towel, or maybe you were using too much of your sponge over the edge, which is exactly what I did here. It's also a lot easier to make mistakes on the small items. So as I am painting these berries and turning them around, I'm getting paint on my fingers, and then I'm touching the berries and then getting paint on the edge of the berries. 
So how do we fix this? If you want to make the edges of your um, cut out the same as the front color, then you'll go into your polyfoam brush, dip it into your paint, and then just use that edge. However, if you like that look of the bold black edge, then we'll just get a little bit of paint on our palette, come into the very edge of our polyfoam brush, once again, come over to our paper towel, and then just use the edge here to help clean that up. You don't want to get a lot of paint on your brush because you don't have a lot of room to work with. So you want to be able to control it by just getting paint on the edge. So then see we're just very slightly adding a little bit of paint, erasing that paint over the edge. The smaller the area, the hard it is to get, harder it is to get in. So you could also use a round brush or the very smallest size of a dome brush to get in and paint and correct those mistakes. The smaller the brush, the easier it is to get into those areas. So I actually like the smaller brushes better, but it's also again going to depend on what you have in your painting arsenal on your painting table and making do with what you have. You also can run into mistakes when you are painting over the edges. So this one's really hard to tell on the blue side because the blue and black are so similar. But on the white side, you can tell that I did bleed over a little bit. So if you would want to, when you are finished with your project, you can go through with the polyfoam brush, especially if it's dual sided, and make sure to have black all along that edge. One more place you might find yourself making mistakes is if the project like this one has a cutout border. So we painted this one, we glued it down, but if you can see right along the very top edge here, a little bit of the blue is peeking out because I didn't get it lined up perfectly. So what I can then do is get into my black or whatever color you would decide to paint that top border. So on this one, it would have been white. This one, it would have been blue. And you can get in and go all along that edge and then along the outside edge just to make sure that it all blends properly. So let's talk about reusing your sponges. We talked about if you are going to reuse your brush, what you need to do to save it, which was put it in the baggie. If you don't have many sponges and you're wanting to do multiple colors, you'll want to make sure that your sponge is dry, which may mean if you use your entire sponge to do a color and you only have one, you'll rinse it out, you'll squeeze it out, do not add soap to your sponges, and then have to wait for it to dry. So it could take a day to do that. However, if you're super careful, you can get paint on one part of your sponge. So I have the number 38, which I did the Mary and the Berries on on this side. And now I'm going to be really careful and go into my number 43. Let me get a new paper towel here. And just do it over here on the tip of this side of the sponge so that we are able to use two colors with one sponge rather than having to have a bunch of different sponges. However, if you're going to be painting a lot of these, can't tell you how many sponges I've had to use when we were painting the samples of these. So if you're going to use multiple, I would definitely say to stock up. <clears throat> One thing to keep in mind, if you use two colors, you'll need to make sure that you stay on the toe of the edge of the sponge that you're using. Because if you accidentally lower it, you're going to get the color that was on the other side on your project. Sometimes that may work if you're going for an ombre effect or if you want to kind of marry two colors together to make them look like they're part of the same family, that might work. However, for this, I do not want that. 
So now that we have our embellishments painted, you might remember on the other side, we painted our Christmas with just one layer because we were going for more of a rustic look. Since we are going for a more bold look on this side, we did two layers. You could even potentially do three depending on how bold you want it. Let me teach you a trick for putting your um, sponge, either your jumbo dauber or your ink sweeper in your water. So it has this place where you can put your fingers. If you put the bottom end of your brush in that area and then push it down in your water, the brush will weigh it down. If you try to just put the sponge in the water, it will flip over and then it will dry out probably before you have a chance to wash it. So our next step here is putting this all together. There are a couple of options. You do have the Mary and the Greenery. If you would want to use those as a guideline, you would do exactly what we did on the back and just paint a very small area, just one dusty layer, so that you know where to put it. Or if you just want to kind of wing it, you can also do that as well. Putting on the Mary, putting on the Greenery, and then adding a berry here and there. And then now all we have to do is glue and we are good to go. Okay, so how do we put this all together once we have it all painted? That's where the gluing comes in. You can use a wood glue, you can use a hot glue gun. We typically use the E6000. We will have a link below to Amazon for that. When you are doing this, you want to make sure that you have everything painted before you glue. And if you are going to do two sides on one project, go ahead and paint both sides before you get your glue on. So I'm gonna switch it over to the other side that we have marked. I'm gonna start there. When it comes to gluing, I typically like to, on the words, you are going to have some areas that are bigger than others. I like to try to get glue on both edges so that I know that the edges will be down pat. And then I try to find the parts of the letters that are the thickest. So the I right here is really thick. There's a thick portion of the H. Here's a thick portion of the R. And I just try to find the largest portions. You don't want a ton of glue because if so, it'll bleed through and I'll show you what that looks like. So now I'll go here. I will get off any strings that are there. I'm gonna set this right here where my Christmas is. So where we have it painted, so that should cover that completely. The nice thing about the E6000 is that you do have a, a few seconds to move it. With that being said, you do not want to pick this up and make it vertical until it is completely dry. Once it's completely dry, then you will be able to set it up. Otherwise, it will slide down your project. Don't ask us how we know. If you do decide to move your project, your Christmas or whatever it is after you put it on, know that there is a chance that you will smear the glue. So when I put this snowflake on here, I originally had it pointing a different direction, but I didn't like how it looked compared to this. So I twisted a little bit, and now you can see some shiny spots in the background where the glue was, and then I moved it. So be mindful of that. You also want to be mindful that when you are setting up projects like this that have an entire layer, that you set it up before you paint it to make sure that you are painting the correct side because it's really terrible to get to the very end and realize that you painted something backwards, maybe you painted it upside down and it doesn't quite fit. Ask us how we know. So as we are getting ready to glue the second side of this, I wanna remind you that you have so many options here. So on the front, the Mary was centered with the Christmas, however, on the back here, I'm going to off-center the Mary and make it a little more left justified with Christmas and with the leaf, 
giving us a little bit of a different look, although it's the exact same project. We often get asked how we hang our projects. Most of the time we use command strips, we cut them in half, put them on the wall where we want the project, use a level, center it, and pop it on. However, if you are doing one of these, you might want to double up the amount of command strips that you use on the back because these are a little heavier because they have dual weight. Now, that being said, the project that we just painted that has something on the front and back is going to make it really hard to be flat and flush against the wall. So with the project we just painted, with embellishments on both sides, our recommendation would be to use a stand for it and you can stand it up tall on a mantle or a countertop or a, um, a buffet or you could drill a hole through the center of it and then put a nice thick rope and then hang it on the front of your door and then you can change it with the holidays. <laughs>